Uh, Leighton Baker is not a stupid man. He's actually got more political experience than Chris Luxon. Um, and he has formed his own party, the Leighton Bacon Party, that will be, as I said, contesting this election. You've already got your voting sheets and you'll see the you'll see that they are there. Leighton Baker, Wendy Gillespie and Deborah Cullimore would appear to be their primary candidates. And he joins us this morning. Welcome to the show, Leighton. Nice to have you on. Oh, thanks, Michael. I appreciate you having us on. Um, now, I didn't realise until I did a bit of research on you that in actual fact you're a political animal. You've been contesting general elections since 2008, so this must make, what, 11, 14, 17, 20? Your fifth general election? Your sixth? That's yeah, scary, isn't it? Yeah. When you say it like that, I'm starting to feel quite old. Well, I mean, it is a lot of elections test at a national level, you'd have to say, Leighton. Um, go back to 2008 when you formed something called the Kiwi Party. What was your thinking? I, I didn't... I didn't form that. Oh, you I didn't, didn't form the Kiwi Party. I was, no, that was formed by two ex um, United Future candidates who had been in Parliament, Larry Bulldog and uh, I don't want to forget people's names. But anyway, they formed it and I jumped on board with them. They asked me to jump on board with them, so I did. Okay, so in 2008, um, what's your politics? Are you National Labour? Are you anything? Uh, before then, I was probably national. My, I, I got involved in politics because I was concerned that we were losing our democracy. I was concerned that um, a few people in Wellington were deciding the future of New Zealand without actually talking to the rest of New Zealand. That, that's why I got involved. And so that's why you got involved in the Kiwi Party in 2008? Yeah, the, the, the main platform was making citizens initiate a referendum binding. Ah, OK. Which I, I, I thought made logical sense if the citizens get up and make enough noise about something because it wasn't easy it's not easy to get a citizens initiated referendum across the line so if they put that much effort and got it surely the government should listen and it should be binding but ne never has been and uh, I don't think any government's ever honoured a citizens initiated referendum in New Zealand up to date mm, No that's fair enough um, The other person you're talking about I think was Gordon Copeland uh, It was he, Gordon Copeland yeah. yeah and he was also he, they, they were both list members uh, of the United Future Party um, they yep. fell out with, I think, Peter Dunn over his support or Dunn's support for the um, Sue Bradford's child smacking bill. Yeah, yep, I do believe you're right. And and that was a good example of where a referendum would have been a useful, um, uh, and listen, I'm total agreement with it, would have been a useful thing to have. If you're going to do that and you're going to impose that on every household in New Zealand, good idea to have a public mandate. The government didn't have one, did it? Well, it didn't, and then when finally when it did get the referendum, and you know, I think it was eighty percent or something yeah. of people said we don't want the law. Yeah. Uh, John Helen Key, Helen Clark wouldn't listen to it, refused to overturn it. So both sides of the political spectrum, Labor and National, um, both said we actually don't give a toss what the people think because we want to do what we want to do. Mm. Well, I don't think that's changed actually over the years, just quietly. Um, all right. I don't think it has either. Now, I guess that's why I'm still involved. Yeah, no, fair enough. All right, so you stand for the Kiwi Party, then you get involved in the Conservative Party, which uh, was run by Colin Craig. You were a candidate, were you, for the Conservative Party? Yeah, well, what happened there is Colin Craig also got upset with the government not honouring um, the referenda, so he started his own party, the Conservative Party. Mm. And Larry Bulldock, who was leading the Kiwi Party, said it's no good having two parties in the same arena and he's got all the money, so we'll dissolve and get him behind the Conservatives. So that's exactly what happened. And so we stood as a candidate uh, for the Conservative. I stood in a by-election in Christchurch East after Leanne Dozell um, became Mayor of Christchurch just after the earthquakes. Um, so I stood in a by-election for the new Conservatives there as well. Um, the Conservative Party there right. As well. Okay. So the Kiwi Party merges into the Conservative Party. Right. Got you going, and in yep. actual fact, it was going quite well, as I remember, uh, leading into the 2014 election, and then it just blew apart um, in the last two weeks over sort of personal matters. Um, that must have been a, a great regret for you, because you looked like you might have got to the five percent, maybe, if things had held together. Yeah, it was looking pretty good. Uh, obviously, you get disappointed when something that's outside of your control blows it up and it all tends to custard uh, and a lot of disappointed people. So uh, I think the whole thing basically died a, a, a quiet death for a wee while there and then there were enough people saying, well, hold on, 
just because a couple of people made decisions that weren't the best, should it destroy the whole machinery that's been built. And so it got resurrected, uh, fought the next election, and it d- didn't do too well, which no one really expected it to. And then uh, 2020, um, we have fought the 2020 election, and um, I think we got 1.4%. Mm. Well, okay, it's still, then you I, know. Then I got sacked. Then I got sacked. Oh, got no, what ha- Okay, now, ex- now explain. I don't not get that bit. So you're the leader of the conser- new Conservative Party 2017 to 2020. You got yep. sacked. What do you mean? The party voted not for you to be leader anymore? Uh, the board, yeah, the board had a board meeting after the election, and they said, didn't do as well, expected, see you later. Mm. Um, and they put in charge who? Who became the party leader then? Uh, well, when they sacked me, they hadn't appointed anyone, and then they appointed Elliot Ikele, who was the deputy leader. Right. Mm. And then and there was somebody after that, that as weeks. well, too, some Maori dude, wasn't there? Uh, well, Elliot stayed a couple of weeks, and then he left, and then um, I think they were without a leader for quite some time, and then now it's um, Helen Horton. Oh, yeah. And, um, and she wasn't in partnership. There's two of them. It was with... Um, Ted, who actually also contested the Auckland mayoralty, Ted Johnson. Um, but I right. think he That's he's right. no longer a co-leader now. I think it's just Helen. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, that is correct. Um, Ted Johnson, that's right. He was a rather thick set, um, not not unattractive Maori man. Is that right? Is that the same guy we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, and I think he's um, a prosecution lawyer. Mm. Yeah, he's yeah, not stupid either. All right, um, no. no. So that, you get the pip. And you go and form your own party? Have I got that wrong? No, I got out of it. I was quite happy not to be involved in politics. And then the beginning of this year, I was sitting in my office doing some work and a poll came out that that, um, said 3.9% of people um, thought I could be Prime Minister, which was very nice and flattering. But what it really said was people want you to stand. And then obviously I got quite a few people did call and said, would you please stand again? So... The problem is, what I had learned in my short years in politics is it takes a heck of a lot of money to get a new brand across the line. Mm. Um, I think Kim.com and Colin Craig and Gareth Morgan all, all were spending around about a million dollars a percent um, on, to get their brand up to the 3 to 4 percent mark. And obviously I didn't have that sort of money. The only thing we did have was the name, obviously, because that's what people had recognised. So that's why we called it the Leighton Baker Party. But I didn't actually want to start a party first off. I really just want to stand as an independent and then get other independents standing around New Zealand. The reason being, it's, it's party politics that I think they've stuffed the place up because people get in on the list and they do what their bosses tell them and tell them instead of the people who they're meant to represent. So I thought to combat that, let's just stand as a local representative, get other people standing as local representatives and then all of us gather together under a banner to get the party vote. But um, you're not allowed to do that. Independents are not allowed to go under an umbrella. So then we had to form a party. Right. Okay. Um, there's only three of you, as I can see on the list at the moment. I might have that wrong. That's you. Uh, no, there's only there's only three. Yeah. Yeah. Wendy Gillespie, who's a um, and Deborah. Uh, Leighton, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Yep. Why? I mean, you know, you're not going to get to five percent. You've actually you you're an experienced political operator. Um, you've been around. Um, you've got three candidates, which isn't really enough to give you nationwide coverage, obviously. Um, you know that it takes millions, literally, to get yourself off. The mainstream media is ignoring you. Can I ask why? Um, yeah, just because people asked me to, and they said, please, will you stand? We want someone to represent our views. So uh, so I am. I, that's what I don't get in. I love my building job. I love construction. I love hanging out with my family. So... I lose nothing not getting in, but I have done what I promised people I'd do, which was stand and be a voice for them on the issues that I thought were really important. And, and mainly, it's around democracy. Uh, and if people haven't got a choice, then we don't have a democracy. And in New Zealand at the moment, like you alluded to, mainstream media don't want to give alternative voices out. So if you can't hear both sides, you haven't really got a choice. Now, you talking about family. You've got a very uh, famous daughter, uh, Chantelle who was very prominent uh, during the parliamentary protest and um, probably was the leading journalist in connection of, in terms of chronicling it at the time. Um, she would have, I thought, been quite useful to have, um, given her name and her profile, standing for politics. She couldn't convince her? Well, I didn't want to. Her, her passion's on the, on the journalism. That's where she's at at the moment. So I don't want to force her into somebody who she doesn't want to be involved in. Or she's, that's not her real passion. So... 
she loves the journalistic side, and so that's what she does, and, and, uh, and we appreciate her doing it. So good on her.